Hey, what's up guys? Sean Sells Denver coming at you live today. Uh, it's a beautiful Wednesday. It looks like my car says 55 degrees. Um, kind of an at-home day. I'm just running some errands. I got a few um, moments, I guess you could say, to uh, bust out a quick video here. Um, right now I've got a listing that I'm trying to sell um, and it's in the more expensive price point here in Denver. So um, it's not the easiest just because there's so many months of inventory of, um, you know, in that price range. So my sellers are awesome people. I mean, they want to get the house sold. We're both on the same exact page, which is such a key thing in this business. Um, so I know we're going to sell it. It's just a matter of timing to find that right buyer. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about negotiations. Um, and kind of some stuff that I've heard. I've watched some other YouTube videos. I've been commenting on them. Maybe you saw my comments. Um, but basically a lot of people are saying the best negotiation strategy for real estate right now is to go in with your highest and best. Wow, I mean, that's that's pretty broad. So what I've come here today to say is I think that's the wrong idea. There's a time for highest and best, and then there's a time to play tactically and work the best for your client and you know or if it's you doing the deal uh, it's time to work the best deal for you uh, so not all scenarios are highest and best um, I think highest and best are just for dire situations for kind of you know I guess there's a few questions you have to ask yourself if you want to do a highest and best offer the first one being how bad do you want the property and two is it is it worth that much is it worth that amount um, so with that in mind, highest and best offers I only use and advise my clients on if, you know, it's a multiple offer scenario, they're a buyer, they're like, hey, I love this house, I want this house. Or there's been, you know, multiple offer scenarios where my clients come to me and said, you know, Sean, I have to have this house. You know, I am not going to lose this house. So in those scenarios, absolutely highest and best, let's get the deal done because that's what's in the best interest of my client. They want that property. Um, so, you know, a lot of times that's really the only time I would use uh, the highest and best scenario. Just because it's my fiduciary duty to, you know, watch my client's wallet. And I think it's irresponsible to constantly submit highest and best offers and leave, you know, um, money on the table when, you know, that could have been, you could have saved your client $5,000 from just a little bit savvier negotiations. Sorry, the camera's a little bouncy, I'm gonna move it. Um, but, so that's essentially what I'm talking about, guys, is um, highest and best I don't think is ever the right thing to use unless it's a dire scenario, like I just explained. Obviously, there's gonna be different scenarios that come up in your um, you know, real estate transactions that you may think differently to do something differently on or act differently based on you know other facts or other reasons involved to bring you to that decision so that's really the only time to use highest and best in my opinion um now there's several other strategies i really like i recently heard this strategy from ryan serhant and i've seen it used multiple times and i think it's an awesome strategy um basically you know is to start asking people what, what would you pay for this property um, because I've had properties where I've shown buyers the property they'll probably schedule a second showing or something like that so they have interest in the property no doubt they have interest um, their agent will tell me something like um, they need one more showing or uh, you know they're super interested we're just thinking about it or you know, they're hesitant on this. Maybe they're hesitant on the area or they're hesitant because it doesn't have X or whatever. That's a great time because the buyers do like the property. That's a great time to pull out the, hey, what would they pay for this? Okay, awesome. They'd pay a million dollars. Okay, awesome. What if we countered you at, you know, 1.5? Would you guys, would what would you guys say to that? Now we're negotiating. Now they're like, wow, you know, maybe I can get a deal on this. Um, and to my sellers, they're like, awesome. Finally, we've got a buyer who's interested in our house because we're flexible on price, but we don't want to leave any money on the table. Um, so that's an awesome, awesome, awesome way to, um, you know, maybe entice a buyer that uh, is enticeable in a sense. Um, they are, they can swing one way or the other, I guess you could say, and maybe they're hesitant on something. Um, but 
you know, if you can make a deal that makes sense for everybody, then that hesitation may fall out the window and they may end up being absolutely in love with the property. It may be the best decision they've ever made. And it's just because I was there and I just said, Hey, what's the value in this house to you? Um, and I think that's an excellent, excellent strategy for listings that have been sitting around for a little while, maybe, um, or expensive listings where there's not as many buyers in the pool. Um, but just to kind of get people like, you know, Hey, we're negotiating now on this property. This is pretty cool. We're going to get a deal. gets people excited. Um, and I think you do get more deals done, um, than you wouldn't have, you know, by doing that type of scenario. Um, but in most cases, um, highest and best offer scenario. I just want to go back there a little bit in those dire, um, cases, you know, since we're talking about, um, negotiation strategies, if it is a highest and best type situation where there's multiple offers on a property, another really good strategy I like to use is I like to go in and I like to really talk to the seller's agent, really let them know, Hey, you know, my clients are great. Um, kind of talk it up and just get that um, level of communication open with the selling agent um, and letting them know, you know, this is what we do, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when the multiple offers come and, you know, a lot of times the agent will say, okay, all offers due by tonight at 8 p.m. Or, hey, we got three offers we're reviewing at tonight. Okay, awesome. That's great. You got three offers. Hey, why don't we do this? Why don't I give you the best terms possible? My, my client will, you know, waive their inspection and... Um, they'll waive some of their funding conditions because, you know, we know they'll get through the pre-approval process and, you know, we're comfortable with the inspection the way it is buying the house as is. Um, this is a great one for investors that I use all the time looking for fix and flips. And it goes like this. I mean, it's basically, hey, here's the terms we'll give you. It'll be a really clean contract, but I want you to counter me at whatever your highest offer is by $1,000 more. Um, or you can even leave out the thousand dollars more and you can go in and you can say first, I'll match that price, but with better terms. And I want you to just counter me straight up. So you submit an offer with an okay offer, but this is how you're not just going to your client's absolute maximum dollar and saying, fuck it. We're all in, you know, um, it's, it's, you don't want to do that in my opinion, unless it's dire, dire situations. So like I said, Hey, we'll bring you a really clean offer. And if it's price that your buyer or that your sellers, uh, you know, is more important to, if that's the most important thing to them, then we'll offer a thousand dollars more, whatever the bona fide offer, um, you know, highest was with these terms. That is the best way, in my opinion, to not leave clients money on the table when you don't have to get a great deal for your clients and make sure you're not doing things unnecessarily in a sense. Make sure you're not going over and beyond um, what you should because you are acting as a fiduciary duty to your clients. So you just want to safeguard their money. I mean, that's huge. And, you know, when you have a conversation with an agent who says, give me your highest and best offer versus an agent who sits down and says, listen, you know, I think we should do this, this and this, and we can still be the highest and best offer, but I don't want to leave money on the table. That sounds a lot more educated and, you know, clients are going to want to work with you a lot more because it sounds like you know what you're doing and you're, and you're more experienced with negotiating. Um, and, you know, that's kind of all I've got for you today, guys. If you have any questions about negotiating, ask me below. Um, I love negotiating. It's my favorite part of the business. And there's all kinds of tactics and strategies you can learn, but really the most important thing is to ask a lot of questions and protect your client. So guys, I hope this video was of interest to you. If you liked it, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you on the next one.